Welcome to the official YouTube channel of Fourturnia.com. I'm your host, AJ, and today I'm doing an unboxing and a mini review of the Masterverse New Eternia Mattel Creations exclusive Snout Spout figure. Now, this is the first time that Snout Spout has ever appeared in Masterverse plastic. And this is the third time a Masterverse figure has been made available exclusively through the Mattel Creations website. And underline that word exclusively, I'm not counting the San Diego Comic-Con figures that were also made available through the Mattel Creations website, like Scareglow, the 40th anniversary He-Man and Skeletor set, or the motherboard figure. Now, I'm just strictly talking Mattel Creation exclusive Masterverse figures, and these are the three. Now, to the left of Snout Spout, I have the new Attorney of Vicron figure, and to the right of Snout Spout, I have the Masters of the Universe Revelation Darkland figure. And as you can tell, the packaging is all the same size. They're the same height, they're the same width, they're even the same depth. And, um, but out of all three, you know what? I think I'm looking forward to checking out this Snout Spout most of all. But before I do, I just want to mention one thing about Snout Spout. Now, a lot of you might be already aware that there's been this controversy that Mattel Creations cannot ship to every fan that wants them. There's a lot of countries that have been cut off, countries like Canada, that can't order this Mattel Creations exclusive Snout Spout figure. And I know the figure is still available on the Mattel Creations website, so I just hope uh, Mattel can resolve these shipping problems and make this figure available to any fan that wants them, and hopefully that will happen soon. So with that out of the way, let's take a closer look at that packaging. So here it is, the Masterverse New Eternia Snout Spout Packaging. And boy, does this look glorious. First, we got to credit the artist. The artist here is Simon Eckert. And he's done actually a lot of packaging for Masterverse. But I got to say, this might be his best work yet. I mean, it just looks fantastic. You know, it's funny. The side of this box does not want to stay closed for me. It's like beckoning me to open it. Open me, AJ. Actually, first, let's just open it just to take a better look at this artwork and spread this out like this. Wow. Now, how amazing does this look? You have Snout Spout, and he's marching towards the camera. And he's, like, holding the battle axe with both hands. And you have the Inferno behind him and uh, the weapons and the snake head. This looks glorious. Oh, this is such beautiful artwork. Hope we see it in a art book one day. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the packaging. Hopefully I can close this here. Won't stay closed. All right, and then on the back here, oh, look at this. I love this pose. It says, Masters of the Universe, New Attorney, original designs inspired by classic concepts. And there he is on his axe. All the fire has been burned out. You see all everything smoldering, the smoke. And he's standing over a burned carcass. Wow, this is just fantastic. All right, let's finally get this open. It wants to be open. Well, let's read the bio on the side of the box. It says, Snout Spout, heroic water blasting firefighter. When the dark forces of Eternia pillage towns, Snout Spout charges into the blazing infernos set by their torches to save the villages from their intruders. Be they Skeletor or the Evil Horde. There you go. You know, someone was asking me if uh, Snout Spout being a firefighter was something new with New Attorney. And I'm like, no, that's his vintage roots. If you look at his original uh, vintage action figure, you'll see Snout Spout. And then underneath it, you know, his subline is heroic water blasting firefighter. So he's always been a firefighter in the Motu lore. And it's kind of cool to have a firefighter in universe you know not many brands have that kind of thing but we do and he's just so awesome now look at this artwork this artwork yeah this artwork is the same artwork as the front but they changed the position of his trunk if you look at this picture his trunk is in front and there's no water spraying out of it but now look at this one his trunk is positioned to the side and there's water spraying out this is so cool uh, so let's take this out. Oh, this is the diorama, and here it is. It's the snakes. Look at that. 
Ah, oh, this is great. All right, so we have a statue of King Hiss to the left here. We have a statue of uh, Lady Slither to the right. And then we got a snake thrown in the middle. This is great, man. I really hope we get Masterverse figures of these two, especially Lady Slither one day. Ah, oh, that would be just so amazing. Oh, and then look on top. We got Turbo Dactyls. <laughs> You know, I'm wondering why we're getting all these snakes, but you know, the more I think about it, the vintage figure packaging on the back had snout spout, I think, like battling some snake men. So it makes sense. And it makes sense that, you know, he was really a later figure in the line once the snake men got more prominent. So it makes sense that he has these, you know, this look in his diorama. So, so cool. Oh, I love it. And then here's the figure itself. Oh, I can't wait to take a closer look at him. Now, and here should be his, his accessories. And then here's the figure itself. Looks like we have some environmental friendly ties. All right, so let me get Snout Spout out of the packaging so we can take a closer look. Okay, so let's talk articulation. Normally I save articulation for the end of the video, but since he's got so many hoses that have to be attached to his body and it's going to get in the way, I figured why not start with it in the beginning when there's less restrictive items on his body, less restrictive accessories. If you want to talk about his armor itself, his armor is removable. I'm not going to remove it, but uh, the belt is removable. So is the breastplate as well. You see that? These just come right off. And even the shoulder pads are removable. You could keep the armor on, but it looks like these slide out here. Look at that. These like American football pads. See that? So you can actually have it without these red pads on, or you can choose to put them in. So it's an option for you, which is really cool. But I'm going to leave this all on, and let's just talk about the articulation with the armor on, because that's really how most people are going to pose it. And let's start with the head. Let's start with those ears. He's got Dumbo ears. Look, he's flapping his ears. He's flying away. No. Um, he could slope them back like that, that, you know, aerodynamic look. It's really, really cool. And his tusks have a swivel to them. So they're articulated. How cool is that? They could be outward or they could be forward. And then his trunk, his trunk has five points of articulation. How cool is that? Oh, here. This is so great. And of course the head goes 360 degrees. Like most Masterverse figures, he's not going to be able to look up that great. Um, but, you know, it's not just Snout Spout. It's been a lot of the figures. It's been that issue. It's with the shape of the, the back of the neck. But um, otherwise, it's good articulation. You know, the real problem I have is these elbows. They've, you know, Masterverse was built on this state-of-the-art articulation. And most of the Masterverse figures, all the previous waves had, you know, double-jointed elbows. But for some reason, starting with Prince Adam, they dropped the double-jointed elbow. And we're now back to the, like, the classics figure form where, you know, he can't get that hand to his face anymore. And I don't know why they dropped that. It happened with Prince Adam and it happened most recently with King Keldor. King Keldor only had single jointed elbows and I'm not sure why they're regressing and they're going backwards. So to be honest with you, the arms are frustrating me, but it's not new with Snout Spout. It's been a lot of Masterverse figures lately and I really wish we can get an answer of why that's happening. Regarding the legs, everything's great. You have uh, drop-down hips, um, which was introduced, I think, with Wave 10. That was Web Store. I believe it was Wave 10. And these swivels. So everything else is great articulation. Yeah. Oh, and you got the great ab crunch. Look at this. Look at this. It just goes round and round. So everything is just fantastic. Oh, and look, even his... Um, I don't know what this is, really like a, a gauge, kind of like you would see on old fire hydrants or something like that, a water gauge on the belt. But even this is articulated, which is just really, really cool. Just goes round and round and round. So everything is just fantastic about this figure in regards to articulation. It's just these elbows that are really a pet peeve of mine, and uh, I wish they were double jointed. So now we're going to move to accessories, something I also normally save towards the end of these videos, but I want to get to it quicker because a lot of these I don't consider as accessories, but actual components that are important to his function as a firefighter, including the water pack that goes on his back and these hoses. 
So I want to attach some of these now and let's start with the water pack itself. What's cool about this water pack is you have these like three cylinders here and they're clear and it's painted with uh, this light blue paint to represent water. So you can actually see how much water is in the three tanks. And you go ahead and you attach this to the back of a snout spout like a backpack. Looks like it takes a little pressure like that. And then we attach the hoses. Now how the water gets to the snout is there is a small hose, a single small hose that attaches to the back of the head like so. And then the back of the pack like so. And this is how the water is carried from the pack to the helmet and out the spout. Now, we want to connect this regulator to the, to the bottom of the water pack here, so we have two more hoses to use. So we have these two, two hoses, and these are longer, and you just clip them on like so, on each side of his regulator belt. And then you attach these hoses to underneath the water pack, like so. There you go. And look at that. He's all ready to fight fires. So one of the very cool things about the hoses on Snout Spout is this configuration doesn't have to remain static, meaning there are display option alternatives for these hoses. There's different ways that you can connect them, and I'll show you what I mean. So this axe is awesome looking, but if you look at the bottom of the axe, it actually has a port for one of the hoses. So what you can do is disconnect one of the hoses from his water pack and connect it to the bottom of the axe. Now, why would he do this? So you can come up with a reason. You know, perhaps he's chopping up these like hot embers that would normally melt the metal of this axe, and he's pumping in water into the axe to keep it cool. Now, he also has another port on his breastplate. So what you can do is disconnect another hose from the back of the water pack and then connect it to his breastplate. And basically, he's just rerouting the water to the frontier. So you have different customizable options for these hoses, which is just rather really cool. So to round out Snout Spout's accessories, he has two closed fists punching hands. And then finally, the piece de la resistance, the translucent water effect. So what we can do is just plug this into the spout of his trunk. Like so. And now he can just douse fires. Look at that. Look how cool that looks. Putting out fires all over Eternia. So here is a closer look at the head sculpt of Snout Spout. And what we need to pay close attention to are those eyes, those translucent plastic eyes. Because apparently this Snout Spout has the low-tech feature of light-pipped eyes, meaning there should be an opening in the back of his head. There it is, that translucent yellow plastic. And apparently if you shine a light in the back of his head, it will make his eyes glow. So let's get Snout Spout turned around. And I have a lantern here. And what we're going to do is shine a little light in the back of the head and see how the eyes light up. There we go. Snout Spout with his light-pipped eyes. You know, I think we'd all prefer like a higher tech solution, you know, battery operated with a little switch and some LEDs in there. But overall, it's still a cool feature, even though it is low tech. So here's the whole display diorama that is, is known now for the Mattel Creation Masterverse exclusive figures. And I really especially love how the accessory box substitutes as a stage, you know, a podium for the figure to stand on that features his name and his description. And same thing with the background, how it's just gorgeous. And this is just a great way to display this on your shelf. 
Now, looking at the figure itself, the paint application, I really love this metallic look, you know, for the head and for the trunk and for the hoses and even the axe. And I especially love this metallic paint used on the tips of the boots. It's just perfect. The rest of the paint is well done, I think. It's, it's kind of flat, mostly, but you know what? It didn't need to be anything else. But the actual metallic look that's on the majority of this figure is just really top-notch, and it really gives them a great aesthetic. So we all know that Motherboard is the tallest figure in Masterverse, but if we put Motherboard aside for a moment and compare all of the other oversized figures, starting with Revelation Dark Lynn, New Eternia Beast Man, New Eternia Snout Spout, and New Eternia Too Bad, New Eternia Snout Spout reigns supreme in regards to height. He has them just by an ear. You can tell his ears tower over the rest just by a little bit, which makes Snout Spout the tallest oversized figure in the Masterverse toy line other than Motherboard. So what do I think about the Masterverse, Masters of the Universe, New Eternia, Natal Creations exclusive, Snout Spout figure? I love him, everyone. The first thing I love about him is his occupation. I love having a figure that his main function is not to go battle evil warriors, but his main function is to battle fires. He's a firefighter on Eternia. It's the same reason why I love Fangor, you know, and the fact that he comes with a wrench accessory and the fact that he's a mechanic. I love having a character that his main occupation is a firefighting occupation. And what an amazingly executed figure. From the metallic paint used on his head and his snout and his axe, to the articulated ears and tusks and trunk, to that great water pack backpack, you know, where you can see the water levels in the cylinders and how much water he has left in the tanks. From the interchangeable hoses that allows you to customize them in configurations that you like. From soup to nuts, this is a great figure. This is the Best snout spout figure ever made, and I highly recommend it. Well, that's it. I want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.